All right. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Michael Branson Smith uh, doing DS106 for CUNY York College CT101. Uh, this is start of week two. I was hoping to have broadcast yesterday, Labor Day, but too much traveling. So um, for the first half of the week, I'm going to just kind of focus on the the technical stuff, and then later this week, I'm going to do some updates on progress of this uh, of all your work and talk about uh, copyright and CC licensing. And you may got a taste of thinking about copyright in my week two, week one summary post two. Yes, there were two summary posts for week one. The second one involved uh, uh, you know uh, the video from last week as well, some description of something I I've been uh, I've been thinking about based on an interaction with a colleague of mine. So we'll do that. But so this week, we're really going to be looking at, so last week you could see we, we, you can remember to go to our course calendar that's on my website. Um, make sure you look to the, the course feed, all right? I, I made a link to the, for those that are feeding into the DS106 site, if you want to look at just the York students who are posting for commenting purposes, look at that site, the course feed. So these are all the things. A number of you are still figuring out your sites. You got to get them done. Wait, I got to do that correctly because I was staring at the end. You got to get your sites up one way or another. You can't do the class if your site isn't up. Okay. So uh, week two, we're going to start with customizing your blog. We're going to go through a bunch of stuff. I made a, a test site so we can kind of burn through this. I'm going to go fast so that uh, since I'm recording this, you can put it back up and pause it and stuff like that. So. Um, I created this site we go um, that's Michael Brands. it's a, one of my sub blogs so right now it's just my blog just another WordPress site that's the first thing we're gonna fix right now we do that in the uh, dashboard as a reminder that's the admin the back end of WordPress this is the dashboard you get there by adding to the end of your URL that WP admin all right, if you add just that, and I'll just do that right now. So here's your URL, and you add wp-admin. It's going to take you. It's going to take you to the um, login page, the dashboard. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings, and we're going to very quickly change that site. All right, it's like uh, working the internet. We're going to name this digital, all right, workbench. Uh, working the tools of the web. Well, how about for the web? All right, for my domain. All right, so that's the tagline. All right, so there's two different things. You have a title and a tagline. Right now, we have a title, my blog, and a tagline, just another WordPress site. I go to the bottom, I'm going to save this, I refresh this, and now we see digital work branch, working the tools for the web for my domain. Now the next thing we want to do is get rid of this image. Um, we're going to look at appearance in a couple different ways. We're going to look at themes, but first we're going to just look at uh, how you, one might. When I click on appearance, there's a whole bunch of options under here. All right. And these change based on the themes that you install. And we're going to look at theme installing. Uh, but we're also first going to look at a header, because I came up with a fun header for this one. Uh, I found a, uh, a CC licensed Flickr image of a workbench that I really liked. So I'm going to upload it real fast. And I chose this file and I'm uploading it. And it brings up this uh, ability to, to whoops. to change what area of the photo to include. I am going to include all these tools at the bottom here. All right. Let's, let's cancel this. I'm going to start that over because I messed up. Let's just do choose file. Do that again. Workbench. Choose. Upload. Roll down, and I'm going to just pull down this default window it's right there. And I say crop and publish. And you can see that's um, my space. And I have to, again, save changes. And I go 
to the home page, refresh, and now I have my own image. Fabulous. All right. Uh, for those that didn't do it, um, but let's let's ignore that. Let's go to themes though. So this is the default theme. If you click on themes, it's telling you, hey, you're using this current theme 2011, which is uh, built by the WordPress team uh, at Automatic. And but there's people that create themes that you can use for free, um, but you have to install them. Um, and you can search to, for themes based on all these keywords and all these different things, but Sometimes all you can do, if you just click search and not, not include a keyword or a term or highlight a particular um, filter, you'll by default just show all the themes that you can choose from. Um, and, the, and it says there's 780 to choose from. So there's all these different themes out there. So we could say, we could we could say say we like I liked a uh, simple catch. I could look at that. I can quickly preview it, and it shows it. I think this is a it gives you a sense of a little bit what it, what it looks like. Uh, notice my header image is now gone. I'd have to reinstall that. It looks like this theme has some sort of slider, so I'd have to uh, I'd have to redo that um, that header if I wish to use it. Here's another one called Cleaner. Now you can install a bunch of themes and then play around with them and figure out which one uh, works for you that you like the most. It's 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 kind of an infinite number of choices practically. Um, but realize some themes involve functionality change, not just the look of the site. And so we're going to keep that in mind. So I'm going to just quickly install um, this theme uh, cleaner because I like lots of white space. And I'm going to, it's it's installing it and you, have, you can just follow. It says download and installing, unpacking, installing the theme, successfully installed, but you still have to activate it. So I'm going to activate this theme real quick. And it's activated. It says the current theme is cleaner. So let's go to Digital Workbench, hit Refresh, and now it looks a lot different. I have one page, and I have my silly default post here, and I have uh, this YouTube tag. All right, so these are changes, and I can always switch it back by going uh, back to uh, 2011. This is the one I was using, and I can activate that. I'll go back, and I'll refresh, and now I'm back to where I was, the Digital work. So I'm not going to keep it on this theme right here. So it's really up to you to, to make these choices. Uh, next, we're going to look at plugins. Plugins are, are, themes are kind of the look of your site. Plugins are the functionality of your site, extending the functionality of your site. The Probably the most important plugin, which comes installed but not activated or configured, is a Kismet. A Kismet is your uh, comment spam blocker. Um, the internet has probably about uh, 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 you know a few million uh, uh, WordPress uh, install sites, and so people are find, looking to find ways to get their product and in, in their perspective out there. Um, and they spam you just like email spam. There's comment spam, and you're going to need to find a way uh, to to manage that. And Akismet is a service um, that you can use. And we're going to activate this, but it's not uh, done. Now, this, this plugin does take some time. You have to, it says, one, activate and link uh, to the left of this description. Sign up for an a a Kismet API key. So, okay, we're going to have to do that. So here's the Akismet site, all right? You have to get, sign up for a key. You are a student. You can use this personal link, and it says it's zero to $120 a year. Guess what? You can choose zero. So we're gonna have to enter some name, your your information here. Um, I'm gonna use my name. I'm gonna use whoops. And I'm going to change the slider to zero. I have an Akismet account, and I use it a lot. So I actually uh, do pay. I think like I, it's, I feel like it's like a donation, and it's a great service. So I pay 20 bucks a year or something like that for my other blog. But I'm just going to make this one up. I hit continue. It's going to send me an email. Um, so. To get, I have to, you should receive an email shortly with your API key and instructions how to activate the Kismet in WordPress. All right, so I've got to get that email. Let's hope it's out. Oh, there it is. I already have that email. 
and it gives me this API key. Let me let me uh, blow this up. All right, um, all right, it's bigger. Well, all right, so it gives me an API key. Don't use mine. All right, I'm gonna end up for the uh, for the. I'm gonna blur this out. So I copy this uh, for the for the save copy. I copy that. And I go back to the plugin, all right? And I have to go now to three. So I got my API key, that was part two. Now I have to go to a Kismet configuration. I have to enter this API key. I have to update these options. And I can say auto delete spam. Um, and so now I'm protected. And unless you, you, you're not protected until you configure. Kismet, very, very important plugin, all right? Um, next, there are a number of, one of the things that we want you to try to do is add, uh, we need to install. So we haven't installed a program, uh, a plugin. We just used one that was already installed. We activated it and configured it, but now we're going to add a new plugin. We're going to add a Flickr plugin and, um, I'm going to try to remember which one I use on my site, which I like and give me a minute here. So we're going to search in the meantime, we can search, we can click, uh, Flickr and whoops, let's click Flickr and get rid of Feed Gallery because there's lots of different Flickr plugins out there. And you know, they do lots of different things. And so what are plugins, just so you know, these are these are because WordPress is an open source piece of software, the code is out in the open, people are willing to hack it, modify it, and one of the ways that they like to hack WordPress is by creating tools that you can install and um, uh, to add functionality to your site. And probably the most common tool that people build are plugins so that you can add specific functionalities like uh, adding a Flickr photo uh, stream or a, a Twitter stream or automatically push your blog post to Twitter. We're gonna do that one as well. So, so you can see lots of people have created uh, Flickr uh, plugins and the one that I, it is that Flickr feed gallery and I'm gonna search for that one. I'm going to install this Flickr feed gallery, all right? Search for plugins. So I'm going to say, okay, let's install this right now. Do you want to install this? Yes, I'm installing it super fast here. And then I have to activate it, similar to the themes. You install and activate. And now this one also requires a configuration, all right? So where is this uh, 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 plugins uh feature set so I can configure it and do something with it. Well, it happens to be under settings, all right? And I look for, I find Flickr feed gallery, and let me see, can you see that? I don't know if you can, yeah. It happens to be under settings. Let me raise this up. There we go. There it is. So Flickr feed uh, gallery settings uh, are is under the, under the settings and I'm going to create a feed type based on my uh, URL. So I have to get my uh, user ID and I'm going to copy and paste uh, my photo stream user uh, for, for Flickr. So to do that, oops, cancel first. Let me get that. New. There we go. Flickr, and I think that's a common, so let's change this to M Ransoms. This is my uh, feed URL, so I'm going to copy that from the feed, and then I'm going to uh, use this user ID, because they, they actually need a specific number that's associated with you, and it automatically puts it in when you put that your, your feed in there. You can choose a number of images to display. I'm going to say eight. Uh, I can make them square thumbnails, public photos, and save changes. So I've saved settings, but again, where is this going to appear? Well, you can put it in, uh, in different places, but this one where I like to use it, now we're going to jump into uh, a brief, another piece of appearance discussion, which is widgets. All right. Widgets are spaces that we can use. Here we go on the side or bottom of our site. 
this space all to the right where you see archives, June 2012, meta, site, and men, uh, logout, this is a widgetizable space. It's a sidebar. Typically, even space below the site, you know, see this proudly powered by WordPress. Below here can also be a widgetizable space. Widgetizable spaces where you can enter and, and place lots of different functions. So we're going to use this uh, a widgetizable space. We have the main sidebar. You can show it also describes a showcase sidebar, footer area one, footer area two. So there's a whole, there's three different areas in the footer. And you can see here's that Flickr feed gallery. Hmm, I wonder what that'll do. We're going to bring this up drag it over into the sidebar and we're going to say uh, at and Branson's um, uh, Flickr feed all right wow that's funny I'm going to say save close and we can go back to the workbench and hit refresh and what do you see now? I suddenly have my latest Flickr images from um, my feed. Okay, so we configured yet another uh, plugin. We this one we had to install, we had to activate it, we had to configure it, and we also had to uh, make an edit to the widgets so that we are we were actually pushing these images to a specific place within the site. Uh, the next Next one we're going to go through is another plugin. I'm going to add new is uh, Twitter Tools. Twitter Tools is going to allow two things that I like to do a lot. I'm going to say install now. Yes, I want to install it. So it's install, activate. And then it's, it's saying update your settings, but I want you to see where they are for future notice. This one also happens to go under settings, Twitter tools. So this one again needs configuration because you need to have um, this talk to your Twitter account. All right. So the first thing you have to do is register this site as an application on Twitter's application registration page. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to use my username and Branson's in my password I'm going to type in. So this is uh, where and, we're, and it says you have to create an application. You can say this is uh, you know an application. This is my work bench Twitter application. This is how uh, through something called application APIs are a way that we allow services to speak to one another on um, on a way that is a trusted basis. So we're creating a, a, an interaction that's possible between both our, my twin, and I probably could use my an existing API, but because I've made this before, but we're, we're doing the whole thing over. Description, to allow uh, Twitter to connect to my blog, all right, website. Uh, it is digital workbench, copy, right? Paste, all right? There's my blog. That's all okay. We have to agree to all these rules that we would never read because it's millions of pages long. Simpler user agreements. That is a call for on the internet. And God, can you read these things? T I, capital I N, capital R. And what the hell is this thing? Oh my goodness, is that D, I, huh, R, a CAPTCHA, uh, of course, what, the application name, Workbench can include Twitter, all right, fine, application, Workbench application, I agree, create your Twitter application, good, all right, so, uh, let's go back and look at the next instruction. So you, you've you made it, all right. Um, the next thing we have to copy and paste our consumer key and consumer secret into the fields below. So where are those? We scroll down, we have consumer key. I have to do a lot of blurring work here. Consumer key, copy, 
paste, consumer secret. You have to copy and paste exactly this text. Paste. Yet there's even more, an access token and access token secret. We have to create those afterwards. These are so fun. Lots of long gobbledygook pieces of strings of characters. Ugh. Paste. One more. Access token secret. Copy. Paste. Now I can finally connect to Twitter. So I've connected. So this is the first step in the configuration. So I've configured. Let's hope this works. I'm not done yet. All right. So now that it's worked, I can start to do things. Um, for example, which is something I do, enable option to create a tweet when you post in your blog. Yes. Tweet a prefix for a new blog post. New blog post, you can say it says, I could say from the workbench. That'll be the prefix followed by the title. Set this on by default. Yes, I want all my posts to be tweeted. Create a blog post from each of your tweets. No, so you could do that. So whenever you tweet, it could push to your blog post. Probably not a good idea if you use Twitter actively um, because then you're going to start tweet spamming uh, DS106 with all your uh, uh, tweets turned into blog posts. Uh, category for tweet posts, we're not going to use that. Author for tweet posts, I didn't change my username, so it still says uh, admin. So we're going to go on and go on. Now this one's a... Uh, um, Oh, the hashtag, we're going to have to install it. Tags for your uh, tweet posts. Uh, so for this, is fine. So we're going to save and update the Twitter tools options. All right. So, but the next thing is we can also do something. Let's, we can go back to widgets. This also has a widget uh, tool. So if you wish to show recent tweets, all right, Twitter tools, I'm going to bring this over again to that sidebar. Get in there. All right, Twitter tools, what I'm doing. What's in uh, tweets? Let me save. And if I go now to the uh, digital workbench, let's close this. And I hit refresh. I now have latest tweets, all right? which includes doing our customization tutorial. That was my latest tweet. And I also let uh, a couple of my students know that we were uh, um, doing the broadcast today. So that's that's a lot of uh, main configuration. Uh, there's one more. Now, the last one is a, is kind of a, a choice in the past. Um, we've talked a lot about one of the a really, really, the other really, really important plugin that we've encouraged students to use is subscribe to comments. Um, whoops. That's one word probably. No, that's installed. Add new, sorry. Um, subscribe to comments. All right. Now, I'm going to install this. Yes. This is a simple alternative to uh, uh, UMW, uh, Martha, and, um, and Alan are encouraged you to use Jetpack, which is a WordPress.com uh, plugin. So you basically, it, does, it has a lot of features to it, which is great, but you would have to create a WordPress.com account in order to use it. If you don't want to create a WordPress.com account and want to, uh, want to be able to have people, and you really, really, really need to have people be allowed to subscribe to your posts, uh, to comments on your posts, um, this is one's very useful. There are um, there are configurations for subscribe to comments. For the most part, you don't really need to do uh, too much. Uh, the idea is like what what this allows people to do. And I'm going to go to uh, this default post now. If I go to Hello World, the default post, and it shows a default comment. Now I can really my own reply. This is a great. I'm logged in. Let's log out for a second. 
So going to the site not logged in, and I see this first post. Now as I go to leave a comment, it's asking for my name, email, so I can put my name and email. And when I leave my comment, there's also now this notify me of follow-up comments uh, by email. This is really, really important uh, in the in the community um, when you're when you're build, trying to build a conversation through a blog post. It's you want to allow people to continue to follow the conversation via comments. So, if you wish to, you leave a comment. Um, maybe the author of the post is going to follow up with what you you said and say thanks. Or at, if you asked a question, maybe they'll answer it. You won't be able to track uh, how they 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 continue the conversation in there unless you have some sort of subscription methodology to, uh, to comments. Subscribe to comments is a very simple one. It works, but you can also look at Jetpack uh, by WordPress.com and it, it comes installed and activated uh, for the most part on your blogs, um, but it's not configured. You'd have to, like we've talked about configuration for a lot of these plugins. It's install, there's install, activation, configuration, and for Jetpack, you have to configure by having a WordPress.com account. All right. Um, so that that's up to you. You can use subscribe to comments or Jetpack. Uh, uh, Jetpack has a lot of powerful uh, tools as well. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to do uh, this Thursday. Here, let me finish off. So thanks everybody. That's all I'm going to do uh, this Thursday. I'm going to get back on and we're going to do a bunch of um, talk about content and progress of the students as well as we're going to. Uh, look at uh, Creative Commons and talk about uh, some of the ideas of of copyright and how some see it as something that's uh, squashing the opportunities of creativity, uh, particularly Larry Lessig. Um, you can start to see the the links and updates in the in the course calendar. Make sure you check the course calendar out regularly. It will all constantly be updated here. You can see, for example, I put progress reports for week one. All this stuff will continue to be updated throughout the semester. Keep looking there. All right. You'll see I right now I'd link the live stream to this talk. So I'm going to switch that to a, a um, to 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 the archive talk. All right. So thanks, everybody. Uh, keep on making stuff. Uh, get into the daily create as well. As you can see, that's in that uh, that that assignment bin. And uh, thanks a lot. Bye bye.